Hey guys, welcome to Boating Tech Talk. Today we're going to be going over crimping and connecting lugs for heavy duty battery jumpers. So we've been working on this system here, which is a solar controller connected to our fuse block and then an unswitched terminal bar. What we're going to do is from here now, we're going unswitched to our battery and we've got our fuse here for protection of our jumper. We went from our 10 gauge wire up to four. Number four is bigger. It goes down in size as the cable gets bigger. And then what we have here is two aught or two zero cable, which is one of the larger cables that we use here for battery jumpers. We've already got one end on with our five sixteenths ring for our bus bar like that. And we're going to our MRBF fuse, which I know is a five sixteenths, but it's always good to check. Take that off, make sure that we've got the right ring. It's fine to redo these if you mess them up, it's always better. Make sure you redo them if it's not perfect, but there's no point in redoing one just because you forgot to check that it's the right ring size, which happens. So what we do first is make sure that our jumper is long enough. First of all, we've got enough length here. So when we strip it and add our lug, it's going to reach to where we need to go. And we're going to be able to keep it neat with nice even bends. We don't want tight bends on our cable. We want to keep it nice curves, enough length. And then we're going to make sure we've got a nice clean cut from our cable cutters on here and then measure out how much we need to strip off. So you can see here, we're going to hold it up here. We want the inside the wire to come all the way up to the end of the lug. So we're holding it here. We're going to measure it. What I'm going to do is show you what it looks like if we were to do one wrong, if we were to strip too much off. So I'm actually going to come a little bit further back and demonstrate that. So we're going to take our knife to our mark, slowly come around the jacket. You need to push hard enough that you go through the jacket, but not hard enough that you start to pierce and taking off some of the strands of your cable. You should be able to grab it like that and see that it's starting to separate the whole way around. There's a little bit more there that we need to take off. Just being careful not too much. This one's actually quite nice. It's coming off pretty evenly. And I would almost be able to pull this with my hands or a pair of pliers. But if it's not coming off so nice, sometimes when it's cold out, these cables are a bit more stiff and it's hard to strip this insulation when it's cold. So I'd take my knife just enough through the insulation, strip it down like that so that it separates and comes off nicely. We did lose a couple of strands there, but on a larger gauge cable like this, one or two strands is totally acceptable. So even holding this up to it now, you can see it's going to be far too long, but just as a demonstration of why that's bad, we'll show you. So it's down there now. You can see we've got strands sticking out the side. That's, you don't want that. You don't want to cut those. What you want to do is actually take that off and try and get those back inside the lug. It can be a little bit difficult. I find it's nice. All cables, even the smaller 10 gauge wires, inside they have a twist. They're all twisting one way. Putting on a, even a smaller heat shrink connector, a number four lug, a big two zero lug. I like to hold the end, kind of follow the twist of the cable to help make sure all of those strands come inside the cable. You see, I still have some sticking out. I'm just gonna get those in there. You can see that that's wrong. There's too much sticking out. We want it all the way to the end like it is now, but we don't want to see any wire in here. So I'd take that off. We know we're taking off about that much. Take my big cutters, parrot beaks, eagle beaks, depending on where you come from. Come down on the cable. I'm using my leg here. Sometimes if you have it the other way, it's nice to use under your arm like this. Squeeze till it's tight and the cable's not going anywhere and you know you have good purchase. Then go back to two hands and push. Just made a little bit of a mess there with all of our strands. Okay. If there's any that didn't quite get cut by the bigger crimpers, 
you can take a smaller set of cutters and trim those off. So now when we push on our lug, we're twisting, keeping that same twist as the cable, coming all the way down, we're hard against the jacket and I can feel that it's all the way against the end of this lug. Once again, just like so. So now that we have it stripped the right length, we're gonna crimp it. We're gonna use our battery crimpers again. We use these and they have a multiple die set in here. So for anywhere from six gauge wire, it's got our four gauge wire all the way down to four zero wire. We're using two zero and so it says I need dies E and A. I already have E here on this side. So I'm gonna push this in and we spin the die and we've got B, there's A, C, K, H, all the way. So we've got B, uh, A, sorry, E and A for two zero. We need two crimps on these bigger ones to make sure that the full tube of this lug is crimped to our wire. I like to start at the bottom to make sure that that keeps this nice compression against the jacket. I've got the crimper tucked up under my armpit. Making these bigger battery cables, it's sometimes so much easier to do it ahead of time. If you're crawling into like a lazarette or under a dash or into a bilge to connect these to a battery, it can be pretty difficult to get these, like that's quite a span that we have on these here. So to get these in here and get the purchase can be quite difficult. And with two watt cable, if you're not putting most of your weight against these crimps to crimp it down, something's wrong. You might have the die set wrong, but it should be a considerable amount of your body weight going against this to crimp it. So it's good to have it ahead of time. You can maneuver it around, make sure that it stays straight. I tuck it all the way up, come to here. I've got it tight on the cable now and I'm gonna to start to crimp. As it starts to crimp, it's not gonna go anywhere now and I can come back and have both hands and push. And that's quite a weight that I'm pushing against that cable. When we release, you can see we've got a nice even crimp around pushed up against the jacket and we're ready for our second crimp up further. It doesn't matter which one you do first, I just by preference like to do the bottom one first to make sure that I have the good connection where I need to. It be a little tough, as you can see that's part of the reason also it would be difficult to do that in a confined space. Getting it over this can be pretty hard. So now we have our lug crimped on. It's not going anywhere, it's very tight, no wiggle. We're gonna add our heat shrink. Sliding it over, you want about two inches of heat shrink or I say usually around three fingers. Making sure that this bottom section of the lug where it actually connects to either our terminal bar or to our battery post doesn't have heat shrink on it. It needs to be far enough back. When it sits hard against the terminal, there's no heat shrink impeding it. If you were to do too much, there is a way you can strip it. So what I'll do is heat shrink this a little too far up and then we can strip the heat shrink back just the same as we would insulation. So I was using my butane gun for the smaller connections on these guys. Once you get up to the battery terminals, you can use this. I find it gets a little bit time consuming and I'm burning through gas, especially if you're building a battery bank and you're doing maybe five or six of these at a time. So I move over and I use the electric heat gun. This one's nice because it stands up flat. So again, we're doing this ahead of time. We can sit it there flat. It's not going anywhere and we can get a nice even heat onto our lug. So we start this up. Again with the heat shrink, I like to start at the end of the lug and work my way down to make sure no air gets trapped in the heat shrink. So holding it here, slowly I just start to turn it around, almost like a schmoll. Slowly, slowly, not too close, you don't want it to burn. Uh, if you see any kind of discoloration or anything happening on this heat shrink or bubbling, then start again. 
it's okay to strip it off and just start again. There's resin inside this heat shrink and you don't want to burn off that resin or lose any of that resin. See there, we got a nice even heat shrunk down and you can actually see the dimples inside the heat shrink of where I crimp my lug. So that's perfect. Now I've got my resin coming out here, which means I got good heat all the way down, but you can see that on here, it's on the flat part of my lug. So as I go to put this on my bus bar, you can see there, there's actually gonna be heat shrink on the bar, which you don't want. You want a nice flat connection, as much surface area as possible. So we're gonna strip that off and we'll do it just the same way that we did our cable. Just start a little further back and work our way around. Work our way around. There's resin in there, so you might just need to cut that off should peel off just like that. And now that's perfect. We have clean surface area here so that when we come down, there's no heat shrink touching this and we still have a good amount of heat shrink covering our lug. We already had our other end done. We're pre-preparing this for if we're in a difficult to reach place, we left lots of length. And then we're just coming back to our MRBF fuse here. So we'll probably use this one. demonstrations. I'm going to leave it finger tight, but it's always important to make sure that you revisit every new attachment point that you do and make sure that it's tight before you apply power. So here we have the MRBF fuse. And again, the stacking of this is important so that you don't have resistance. These are stainless pieces of hardware, which are not good uh, electrical conductors. So you need to make sure they're the last thing that goes on. We have the base of our fuse, our fuse, our cable, oops, and then our washers. Again, we'd revisit that, make sure both of these are tight, but that's how you do a battery jumper. Thank you for watching this PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask them below or send us an email via the contact forms on our website. Happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping this channel ad-free by purchasing some merchandise on our store or by making a donation on PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.